evening, everyone, and welcome to the Ghost Biker Garage. I am in my home away from home right now. Um, I'm not in the Ghost Biker Garage as I typically am on Thursday nights. Uh, I am actually uh, on location. This is the, uh, we'll call this the County Jail House Edition. Uh, I am actually located here, uh, broadcasting my show here from the historic Scott County Jail. So, um, you know, we've been working all day and uh, thought I would uh, just go ahead and bring the show here. So, um, so again, thank you all so much for tuning in. It's, it's kind of been a while. Uh, we haven't had a show for two weeks. We had, the, uh, we had the grand opening of the jail back on September 4th. And then also really just getting ready for this upcoming season and getting everything ready, getting the museum up and going here. Just had a lot going on, so um, so it's been a little bit, but we've got some great guests for tonight's show that uh, I'm going to bring on here shortly. But I wanted to go ahead and say hi to a few of the folks who are here in the chat room. Hello, Janet. Hello, Dr. Christy Sumner. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I'm not exactly sure why, but for some reason on the uh, time slot here when I was pulling this on, it had it set to go live at 10 instead of nine, but uh, we went ahead and went live anyways. Not really sure what happened there, but um, hey, Al, thank you so much for tuning in. And if anyone has any questions from tonight's guests, if you'll just put them in the comments section, we'll pull them up. And uh, when we get a break in our conversation, we'll make sure to, uh, to ask your questions. Um, this is episode 30, which we're excited about. Uh, we're almost here in October. Uh, which you all know what that means, uh, the start of Ghost Biker Season 4. Been working really hard to get all of that put together, and if everything goes as planned, fingers crossed, uh, the first episode of Season 4 will be dropping on, let's see here, make sure I tell you right, Tuesday, October 5th at 9 p.m. Eastern Time on the Ghost Biker Explorations YouTube channel, as well as Facebook page. So, we got our fingers crossed that that is going to go as planned, but um, we'll, you know, we'll let you know as it gets just a little bit closer, if by some chance something with that changes. But I wanted to go ahead and uh, introduce tonight's guests because we've got, got two guests on tonight. One of them, he was actually my first guest on uh, the very first episode of the Ghost Biker Garage. So, um, I know a lot of you guys tuned in for that. So if uh, if you haven't seen it, I suggest you go back and check that out. But um, tonight's guests are the podcast hosts of the Para-Unity podcast, Brandon Marsh and Whitney Zahar. Brandon's been investigating the paranormal for the past 15 years and has a background in law enforcement, especially coming from, excuse me, he also received his certificate of ordination of, Christi of Christian ministry 21 years ago and uses a combination of Wiccan rituals with Christian rites to cleanse and clear homes. Brandon is executive producer and one half of the hosting crew of the Para Unity podcast. Whitney is the other half of the hosting team for the Para Unity podcast. She grew up in the history-laden, story-soaked atmosphere of Virginia, and she's always had a lifelong interest in the paranormal, reading everything she could get her hands on in the library. Whitney has done a few investigations with several groups in Virginia, including her own Shadow Walkers Paranormal. Whitney has also made guest appearances on Paranormal and Spooky Podcasts, in, including, excuse me, <clears throat> I can't talk tonight, including History Goes Bump, Haunted Happenstance, Homespun Haints, and Campfire Chronicles. When she's not a voice on the podcast, Whitney is a museum educator at a history museum in Virginia and a writer. Her first novella is out now. So we're going to talk about all of that and more here on tonight's show. So I'm going to go ahead and bring on Miss Whitney. Hi. And Mr. Brandon. Hey, guys. Hey, Hello. guys. How's it going? Hey, everyone. Thank you all so much for taking the time to come on tonight. Our pleasure. Miranda. Our pleasure. I'm not surprised I'd be with you two when I ended up in jail. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? You know, it just it just makes sense. Hey, yeah, it wasn't it, it wasn't my fault this time. <laughs> <laughs> not this time. <laughs> well, this time I'm sitting on this side of the booking desk, so you know. That is yeah. so cool. <laughs> 
<laughs> so if anyone hears anything, any noises or anything going on, you never know. I mean, it's it's been a pretty active, pretty active time here at the jail. We've had some pretty cool investigations, and then we had uh, our first investigation since we opened. We had a team here this past weekend, and. They had some pretty cool activities, so Ooh. just kind of be on the lookout if you see any shadows or hear any sounds. It 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 could be something. Cool. I'm gonna keep my nice. eyes on that now. <laughs> How's it been going, by the way? I saw you had your grand opening. We did. We did had the grand opening, and uh, we had quite a few people out here that day. We had uh, Mother Legacy. She's performed on this show before, Ooh. and she came performed. We had some food trucks here. Um, and it's it's been going good since. We've had a lot of out-of-towners come, as well as a lot of locals come and check out the uh, museum that we've had. And we've got, I think, 12 investigations booked for the next, nice. over the next couple months. Yeah. That's exciting. Very nice. Yeah. So, well, you got it with Dr. Christie. So, I mean, what can go wrong? Yeah. I know, right? <laughs> I, can't, I can't think of a better business partner. She, oh, yeah. Uh, she's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. She's... Uh, uh, we both, you know, have been really working hard on this and, and uh, you know, she's really helped to get the word out and all that kind of stuff with, uh, you know, people coming in. And so, yeah, good stuff. Um, so tell me about you guys. Tell me about uh, what's going on with the podcast. Who? <laughs> <laughs> Brandon? <laughs> it's, it's been a wild ride so far. I mean, we've had some good, good groups on there and... I mean, I don't even know. It's it's been such a such a fun thing that's happened since Whitney came on here in the off season. And I mean, you guys might notice it tonight, but uh, we act like brother and sister whenever we're on an episode. And we've really only known each other for maybe what two months, maybe two three months. Yes, yes, if that. So I mean, we had this like perfect like flow with each other and. I mean, I, I couldn't have asked for a better partner to come join on to it. So, yeah, definitely. So, so tell us if for people who either haven't listened to the podcast or didn't catch you on my first episode, first tell us about the podcast and, uh, you know, kind of how it got its name and, and what you all do and then how you all came together. You want me to do this one? Yeah, you do. You, it's your podcast, dude. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's ours. Baby. It's ours. So well, basically, yeah. <laughs> basically, the show is all about talking to um, different paranormal teams about paranormal investigating. So think of it kind of like talking shop, ghost hunters talking shop. That's kind of always kind of the, the, the terminology we use for it. We talk about places that are in their location. We talk about the history of the area. Um, techniques they use equipment they use some of their favorite places they've been and just all around just have a good time we laugh we joke um it's <laughs> it's been a blast i uh, i think my most favorite one that we've done so far is still coming up it'll actually be uh oh we got a little jump in this is <laughs> preston everybody this is my reason for being hopefully oh. school's going good preston <laughs> Mr. Brandon asked how school's going. <laughs> yeah. That good. All right. That. Um, yeah. He's so also we have an, an artist. Gosh, I'll, I'll see it later. Okay, baby. Okay. I love you. <laughs> now that's live. <laughs> that is live. It is Dr. Christie right there. Hey, Beautiful. Christy. Thank you. But yeah, hey, I mean, Steve. we just. We have fun. We talk to people that are actually in the fields investigating. It's not just one of your shows where we're just talking about haunted locations. We actually dive into more of the science and more of the investigation techniques that's used. The idea is for if you're interested in it, you know, this gives you a great chance to find out more about what we do. Um, if you are an investigator, sorry, my computer's falling off the stand. Um, <laughs> Then if you are an investigator, maybe we'll talk about a technique you've never heard of or something you're thinking about trying. And it gives you a chance to get a little bit more information about it. And I I think we do it in a fun way. I mean, we haven't stopped laughing, I think, in every episode. So this but we have a we true. have a real good um, in what, three weeks, I believe. Three weeks we have um, uh, Mustafa from from Ghost Hunters is going to be one of our guests on the show. 
Very cool. That should be a great show. And, you know, that's one of the things I really enjoy about your podcast is you cover some great topics and the uh, people that you have on are very knowledgeable about um, the techniques they're using or just the topics. It's 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 a great, interesting podcast to uh, follow for that. And I'm learning a lot, too. Um, <laughs> my I mean, I'm learning about parts of the U.S. and part, other parts of the world because, you know, in the past, um, Brandon has interviewed teams from outside of the United States. And I really hope we get that opportunity to do that again. So it's really a learning experience for everybody and for us, too. And I want to take a moment to shout out my friends, Chris Vaughn and Steve Dills, who are right here in Virginia with me at Transcend Paranormal. You guys are coming on the show. No ifs, ands, or buts. <laughs> I really like Transcend. I got to meet uh, Steve uh, mm -hmm. when I did St. Albans for the first time earlier this year. And just, oh, just a great group of guys. I was at St. Albans in 2020 for the first time. We'll talk about that later. Oh, my God. <laughs> that place. <laughs> that place. It was, but anyway. it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, so, and, and so you said you're in Virginia. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, Brandon, you're in Wisconsin, Iowa, <laughs> Iowa, <laughs> Iowa, <laughs> Iowa, Iowa. <laughs> and uh, and how long have you been doing doing the podcast for now? So in March it'll be our third year. So we are a few episodes into our fourth season. Mm -hmm. um, so I mean, it's been coming a long way from originally because when I first was getting into it, my goal was to uh, interview one team from each one of the 50 states and call it a day and be done. And three episodes in, we're talking to Phil out in uh, Galway, Ireland. And it's like, okay, well, this isn't going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. And I so, can't. and so you said, uh, Whitney, that you joined uh, back in March, did you, May, March? I, I think it was June, June? July. July, okay. I think. Yeah, yeah, it was okay. July. Um, but uh, Brandon had been looking for a co-host um, mm -hmm. because, well, I'll let him tell you why. But um, I had been listening to the episodes also. Um, he had had so many cool people on the show. And I really also liked listening to him and Xander from mm -hmm. Xander and Stone podcast. <laughs> Xander's, Xander's fun. Xander's <laughs> fun. I cannot wait to actually get on a stream with him and talk with him but um because we have similar experience he's in china i used to live in taiwan so wow. i remember what that yeah but anyway um i saw on you know the paranormal facebook groups that brandon was looking for a co-host and i'm like yeah what the hell i'll throw my hat in the ring let's see what happens sure i'll i'll, I'll do i'll do I'll, I'll just throw another thing on my plate I'm writing books. I'm working in a museum. I have a 10 year old. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> and then, so I think it was a true instance in serendipity and the rest is history. And I'm so excited and I'm so honored to just be a part of all this. Well, to be, to be fair, um, Xander was one of my, um, I don't want to say judges because it's not like this is American Idol by any means. Oh, but, yes, <laughs> <laughs> um, I played by everybody's everybody's um, auditions that they had for it by Xander and then a few of my other friends that are out in the podcast world. And it was hands down. It was Whitney. So, oh, I mean, I had already I had already just by listening through them had already decided that Whitney was going to be who I wanted. Mm -hmm. But I don't like to just you know, just like an investigation. I don't like to just take one word for it. I like to dig into it a little bit. So I had three other people listen. And I mean, within about five minutes of sending it to them, everybody came back and said, no, it needs to be Whitney. So. That makes me so warm and fuzzy inside. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I mean, once again, it's, it's an honor and I'm looking at this as a huge learning experience and already I'm learning so much, especially when it comes to the tech aspect of mm -hmm. what many of the teams are doing. I'm not the most tech oriented person in the world, but I like to keep an open mind. So it's great to hear what people are doing. Yeah, I mean, and that's for me doing the live stream that I've been doing, cause I just started doing it this year. 
And uh, that's been the best part of doing that is I felt like I've learned so much from all the different people that we've had on the show. Yeah. And I mean, the nice thing with this is I, I get more into the tech stuff. Um, I have a uh, equipment addiction. <laughs> I, I like to try all the new stuff and see if it works, see if I like it. And if it doesn't, it goes on its merry way. Otherwise, it ends up in my massive totes upon totes of equipment that I drag around with me. Um, oh but I cover a lot of that side of it. And I couldn't have found a better person on the history side because, I mean, I, I used to look into the information when I did get into the history of the, of the locations. But Whitney, like, goes far beyond that. Like, she'll she'll find all this great information that we start off the episodes with where we talk about the histories of the places. And she'll be sending me messages of, like, four, five, six different websites that have all this historical information. She's like, look at all this because you're going to want to know it. And it's like, oh, whoa. <laughs> Let's put it in the show notes. <laughs> yeah, let's put it in the show notes. So, yeah. so speaking of equipment, what what is your uh, favorite piece of equipment right now? Oh, geez. Oh dear. You, you I'm have not to used. Ask I'm, not, I'm used to, to asking ask. that question, not having people ask me the questions. <laughs> That's the fun part. The podcast turn the tables. The turn the tables, and I'm like, ah. <laughs> you know, I I don't know. So. One of the things that we had is, I mean, I'd say probably just me as a person, all the mm -hmm. other equipment just kind of sweetens the pot, adds the sprinkles sure. on my cupcake, I guess. Yeah. Um, I had a really crazy case a while back where I'm, I'm pretty sure I got an attachment from it because it was, it was wild. And um, the voices that were coming over on the spirit box while we were doing the investigation review sounded like this younger girl. And I went down to Phoenix and was doing some investigations with the team down there. And we were getting the same voice in Phoenix that I was getting back wow. here in Iowa. And once we got back, I was still having that same voice showing up on investigations. And I ended up going through and talking to a lot of different people, you know, mediums, um, aura cl cleansers type people that um, all said that, it seemed like that's what it was. And they said, you know, you could see a real dark, like presence in my already, like almost black eyes. Um, and so it took a while to get rid of it. And ever since then I've been, I don't want to say I'm sensitive or I have powers or anything like that, but I get kind of a goose bumpy feeling when I, right before we start getting evidence, I'm not Ooh. saying I have abilities, not at all. I've always been the, the kind of the hopeful skeptic, I guess you could say. And ever since then, that's kind of been um, my biggest thing is it's, it's fun because I'll kind of get a little tingly and mm -hmm. then we'll get great responses on the spirit box or on um, REM pods or, or the K2s or any of the other list of equipment. And actually, since we talked to you, I've actually had my first REM pod experience. It took 14 oh, wow. and a half years for the damn thing to finally go off. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So, see, to me, that just adds credence to when it does work, you know, when you have something that just doesn't work, whenever it works like that, it, it to me, it adds credibility to it. Absolutely. Yeah. Or at and least then, depending on the situation. Sure. And then to answer your listener's question, Daryl, there, um, mm -hmm. I, I have been scratched. Um, I've also had a friend of mine that got very much scratched down his face, his neck, and down his chest as well Ooh. at a place. So, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm familiar with it. <laughs> I, I haven't been scratched yet, but I have definitely been touched. Um, so the way I kind of am is I'm still also trying to explore it a lot. I've always been sensitive. Mm -hmm. um, I do get feelings um not just emotions but i also get physical sensations um whether that would be my hands start to tingle like they feel like they're falling asleep or something okay. um or they feel heavy um that's just one of the many sensations that i do get sometimes i do get sick on site i mean i haven't thrown up yet that's where i draw the line i will draw the line at vomiting but um <laughs> Yes, yes, I will. <laughs> but um, what's cool for me is when I'm feeling something, 
it's not so much a specific piece of equipment. It's mm -hmm. when multiple pieces of equipment correlate what I'm experiencing. Yes. And one of the best experiences of that for me was I was on Battleship North Carolina last year in November. I was with um, Diane and D Diane and uh, Kelly from History Goes Bump podcast. We were doing the History Goes Bump podcast field trip. So there was a small group of us. And we were investigating also with uh, my friend Ray Savino, who runs yeah. RTL Paranormal and Bloomery mm -hmm. Productions. And we had Brian and Rochelle and Mustafa there. And also Kendall and Vera Welton were there. So oh, cool. we were, yeah, it, it, Good was company. A, it was a fun evening. And Battleship North Carolina is just a fabulous historical site to just be where you look at where people lived who served their country. Mm -hmm. And it was amazing. But um, there's an experience that I had. We were in this area where it was sort of like a elevator okay. where you, they would load the torpedoes and okay. missiles. So, and right above us was examples of the torpedoes and missiles were there. So we were all down at the bottom and we were list asking questions and doing all that. And I just kind of looked up and I'm like, there's a guy just standing right there on top of the promenade. He's on top of the mezzanine. He's just standing there. It's a shadow. I can't see features, but I know it's a guy. He's just there looking at us. He's paying attention. He feels like he's watchful, like, oh, you're here. What are you doing here? And then Brian goes up with his data logger. And also right. other people were saying, yeah, the temperature's dropping down there. And he holds it up to the spot where I was seeing the shadow and it was, the data logger just went nuts. Wow. So the ir irony is like, um, I didn't expect that. Oh boy. <laughs> what does, that, what does now, that mean? Did Did anyone else pick up on it as well? Or was that more of sort of a personal experience? I thought at first it was a personal experience, but then I found out later that there was at least maybe one other person that saw it. And also somebody else had a K2 meter and mm -hmm. their device was going off too. So that's awesome. That's, I mean, <laughs> that's so cool. Like you said, whenever different tools go off to corroborate what's happening. I mean, that's, that's very cool. It was, and also a little intimidating. <laughs> yeah, uh, Jim, I've had similar experiences on the North Carolina too with sudden cold spots and chills that it's it's an incredible location. Incredible. Um, I wanted to jump back to to a question that had popped up. And, and like I said, I'm trying to man the uh, um, chat room over here. So if I don't see your question or comment right away, I will get to it here in a minute. Um, I wanted to address what Janet said. Uh, she is actually from uh, Arizona or in Arizona now. She's asking where you investigated in Phoenix. So we technically it wasn't in Phoenix. It was outside of Phoenix. It was in Superior, Arizona. And um, if you've ever been to the town, there's 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 not much left to it out in the Tonto National Forest. Um, but where we had investigated, it was, it was a former school and they've kind of turned it into well, half of it's not really used. The other half's now the police station. Um, oh, wow. So it was very entertaining as we're doing the investigation and the guys with the police officers would kind of pop open one of the doors to kind of look in to see how we were doing. And they're like, how's it going? Are you guys getting any responses? And we're like, yeah, it's been pretty active. And they're like, okay, great. Bye. And shut the door and they'd be gone. But I mean, it was, it was a lot of fun. We had some very wild experiences. We actually got a chance to play uh, hide and seek with one of the children there. Um, it would show up and I have this device. It's um, it's called a, a it's a, like an infrared uh, crosshairs. So it shows um, it baselines off whatever's in front of you temperature wise. And then if something cold moves in front of it, it turns blue. Something red turns in front of it, moves in front of it, turns red. And it actually like tracks across the screen up, down, left, and right. So you can kind of get an idea of where it's at. Mm -hmm. And we we're using that in a K2. And we would ask them, you know, we were trying to get responses because since it was a school, you know, obviously why not? Um, but we got this little kid's voice come on and um, 
a friend of mine that was actually this this was a great example of para unity because he's originally from colorado he was on a team that was actually our first episode for para unity um dylan and i met up down there because he'd moved to phoenix and then we joined up with this team it was paranormal scientific investigations is oh. the name of their team um but we met up with them to do the investigation at the school we we were trying to get responses and we're like hey does anybody want to play a game maybe we can play hide and seek and the k2 went crazy and so it would hide in this room and we would go around until the sensors and stuff would start going off and be like found you all right go hide again and then they would all shut off and they would it would move and we'd go around the room and until we found the signal to go off again and found you and we went on for this for like five <laughs> six minutes if not longer and we were asking little questions as we went through it and one of the questions that we asked dylan asked you know what was your favorite animal and on the audio you could hear a little kid's voice go quack 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 Aww, quack how cool so it was a lot of fun that is cool yeah that's something that uh um i try to do when i go to different locations is play k2 hide and seek and, and it's a really kind of amazing sometimes some of the results you'll you'll capture with that i know uh i was doing a residential house and it was said that there was a girl that um, that they often saw there. And we had no children there. It was myself and three other guys. And while we were investigating, we found the little girl in the bathroom and we said, found you and, it's, and said, do you wanna play again? And as soon as we asked that, we got this child that came through and said, awesome. <laughs> and it sounded like a, like a little girl, you know? And so it was cool because like I said, it was just myself and three other guys that were there. And um, yeah, she, she really enjoyed playing that. So I always try to do that when I go to different places with kids. Hi, yeah. Jeff, how are you? Yay. Um, uh, yeah, I don't so, spend a whole lot of time. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I just haven't yet. <laughs> So how long, uh, I know Brandon uh, has been investigating for uh, quite some time. How about, how about you, Whitney? How long have you been an investigator? Hardcore boots on the ground, not that long. Like maybe off and on over the course of maybe two years, two or three years. And finally, I am now with my own team. We are called Shadow Walkers Paranormal. The base of the group is in Williamsburg, Virginia. and. The thing that we all, most of us have in common in the group is we all have a connection to Williamsburg, whether we worked there, whether we lived there. And it's real, it's a really cool thing that sort of connects us all together. And we're as, I mean, our start date was 2020. So it's learning how to, we're still trying to find our voice, but Shadow Walkers has been working with some of the other local groups in Virginia to mm -hmm. sort of find their voice, find their what works best for us. And mm -hmm. we're still we're just having a great time with that. Um, I think they're going to be when there are some events going on, we're doing it as a supplemental group. Mm -hmm. so that we, and there have just been several small several groups in the area that have taken us under their wing and just sort of guided us along. And again, that's what para unity is all about when you see these new groups coming up and you see that these are people that have true passion and they truly want to get out into the field and learn more and help people than some of the more established groups in the area they'll come to you mm -hmm. and if you ask they will come to you and they will gladly take you and mentor you and yes, Virginia has some very, very creepy places. It, that is the <laughs> nicest thing you can say, Cody. Uh, <laughs> it's so true. I've been to several of them. So <laughs> it is so true. <laughs> so speaking of those creepy places, what, what are both of your all's favorite places to investigate? You go first, Brandon. <laughs> you would do that to me, wouldn't you? I would. Um, <laughs> Well, Superior was pretty cool. Um, I I don't know, man. I, the The most recent one I went on here in Marion, Iowa, just outside of Cedar Rapids, if I'm sure a lot of people probably don't know where Marion is. Um, 
it's an old house. It was built in, what was it, 1846. And the original owner had it for, I think it was like five years. And then this family bought it, the Grangers. And they owned it the entire rest of the time up until I think it was like the eighties, seventies or eighties and all their original furniture is still in the house. Um, the family had built a second house next door that the brother had moved into. And when the family had died and he had died, the daughter got possession of it and moved all of the furniture back into the house. That was the original families. And they, do an amazing job with the people that run it now. Um, they let teams come in. They're actually a team. They're part of a team. So they, they're they big on having other teams come in and investigate. They'll jump in with you if you want to. They invite you to do different things. And the house is wild. Um, we had a great uh, audible voice come over. Um, we actually have a, a video or an audio clip of it. Uh, one of the one of the gals on our team, she kind of made it a little more um, Hollywoodish, I guess. She kind of added some little captions to it to kind of make it a little more entertaining. But you can hear perfectly clear on the audio review. You can hear his name said, and I mean that was great because all of us stopped in our tracks. And of course, the door that I'm in, since it was built so long ago, and it was an addition that where we were at, the door like came to here on me so i was all like hunched down trying to get through this doorway when everybody kind of froze and it's like all right can can we move now i don't fit <laughs> but we had that we had um a lot of it was i would say almost religious mm. though some of the experiences we had we kept getting a lot of voices talking about wings and birds and um we had a really bright white light up here in one of the rooms and just it shut off everything in the room when the light came on. Um, it was like a flash of a camera. And then afterwards we were getting voices coming over saying that he moved on or he passed on. And it's, it was, it was wild. And I mean, if you come up here to Iowa, I'm going to recommend that as a place. I mean, everybody's heard of Valeska. We've heard of Malvern mm -hmm. Manor, the squirrel cage jail, uh, Edinburgh Manor, but I think I think the Granger House needs to be on that list for some of the the best places. I would places love here to check Iowa. that out. Yeah, that I mean, it's five minutes fun. from my house, Miranda. Come on over. I need to. I need to come <laughs> up and I need to do an investigation with you. I know we've talked about it for a long time. We have. We have. Yeah. I don't yeah. have my Harley anymore, but you know, I can always <laughs> rent one out and we can go cruising. So. <laughs> Well, we will definitely do that. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. Steve, Steve says he knows your pl favorite place. Yeah, he does. He does. Um, I actually have what? Okay. So my absolute favorite place as of right now is St. Albans Sanatorium. In up in on the outskirts of Radford, Virginia, <laughs> <laughs> because technically it's not in Radford, Virginia, but it you know, we'll give it to them. Um, St. <laughs> Albans has a very, very interesting and kind of checkered history. And I actually have done some of the rounds on some of the other podcasts trying to debunk some of the historical oh. claims. So, but the fact of the matter is, it is in an incredible environment. It's on a bluff overlooking the new river, which is a very powerful river. And there is history of native settlements, um, at least on the other side of the bluff um, across the river. And there is also the railroad there. It, it has a, there is some civil war history there. It's, it's an incredible diverse environment when it comes to that. And also it's just beautiful. You're in the foothills of the Blue Ridge mountains. It's great. But St. Albans itself, uh, originally it started out life as a boys school boys prep school and that was from like 1892 until about 19, 1904 1905 when it shut down then it then it switched gears in 1916 to um a psychiatric facility but it also probably was an actual hospital 
that saw to cases in the area too. There's also coal mining in that area. And I saw somewhere in the, um, so Radford University does have in its special collections, the yearbooks of when it was a boys school. And it also has some primary sources about how they took care of coal miners in the area. So it's a diverse history. I'm just scratching the surface. The claims and the spiritual activity there is off the hook. Um, you get, you basically get a mixed bag there. When I was there, I was, um, this was before lockdown <laughs> with the pandemic. Um, and it was an amazing experience. Um, ironically, I actually felt safe there. Yes, Brandon, I know what you're just thinking. It's like, yes, Whitney feels safe in a mental hospital. Of course she does. <laughs> I didn't say it out loud. I <laughs> um, but still, um, I had a lot of amazing experiences there. This is where I definitely got touched. One of my most, I, I actually felt in the electroshock room, I felt my forehead was burning. And then I also felt like my tongue had gotten swollen and thick in my mouth. Wow. Mm. Very interesting. Um, but the most vivid so two very vivid experiences stand out. Uh, first one was in the bowling alley because they have a bowling alley down there. It is mm -hmm. covered in graffiti. It is the people that work at St. Albans, you know, trying to restore it and take care of it. They definitely have their work cut out for them. God bless them. But you're down in the bowling alley. I'm sitting in this folding chair just not too far from the frame. I think I was about mm -hmm. maybe four feet away from it. And one of the investigators had set a periscope up on the frame. Like it was about five feet in the air behind me. And I'm just sitting there and I feel some, first I feel kind of like a pressure on the right side of my neck. And then I felt something touch my ears. Like if you ever seen Mork and Mindy, mm -hmm. um, you know how Mork always ended his show by going, Nanu, Nanu. Mm -hmm. That's what it felt like. That's exactly. Oh, wow. And I even felt the fingernails. Wow. It didn't, hurt, it didn't hurt, but I'm like, okay. Hi there. <laughs> um, I'm not quite sure what to do th with this information, but I don't think you mean me any harm, which is a good thing. Cool. Um, it was a very interesting experience. Um, and then the other visceral experience I had at St. Albans was we were in this floor called the pink floor because the end of the hall had pink. You, you know which floor I'm talking mm -hmm. about. I do. I do. Yeah. So as you're going towards the pink, the pink wall, last door on the right, isolation ward, mm -hmm. something just kind of loomed up at me as I was walking past, almost as if something was like getting up in my face and saying, hey, you know, it was angry, but it wasn't at me. It was just what it was. And I grabbed one of the investigators and I'm like, there, I want to go in there. So me and an investigator and a tour guide went in there and we are plastered up against the walls. Mm -hmm. it's, a small, it's a small room. It's winter time. So I'm wearing a heavy coat, two layers of clothes, thermal underwear, and I'm carrying a backpack over my shoulders. And as I'm just sort of backed up against the wall, because we had set the REM pot up in the very center, I felt mm -hmm. something poke me right between my shoulder blades. Just went poke. Wow. And it was like the REM pod was just going nuts. So we turned it off and we left the room. We turned it back on and it was completely quiet. Wow. It was, I, I cannot wait to go back to St. Albans. There's so much that needs to be done there. Mm -hmm. However, to acknowledge Steve, yes, my other favorite building is the uh, Hanover County Old Jail because he knows what happened to me there. <laughs> I got grabbed on the back of my neck because there's a very grumpy spirit there that does not like anybody. He is curmudgeonly, he is not nice. It's because basically the Hanover County um, old jail has remnants, is, it's 
it houses some collections from the Hanover County Historical Society. And okay. so they have remnants of this beautiful house that was built in the 1720s and it was torn down by Hanover County for no good reason. Thanks. Mm. Yeah. So there's pieces of it in that jail. So we think that whoever this is, is attached to those objects and he likes to let people know that he's not happy. So he goes and grabs the back of my neck and it, that, that was not fun. It felt like a Vulcan neck bench. Wow. Could be worse, Wendy. It could be like Gina on the other episode we had where somebody grabbed her butt. That, is, oh my God, <laughs> that was, those are some of the craziest stories and the most incredible <laughs> stories I had ever heard. It's like, wow, she's a magnet. That's she is. Fantastic. Wow. Well, you know, in in speaking on St. Albans, um, the place that I had some of the most craziest experiences when I was there back in April was with uh, Alan May from uh, Bedford Paranormal. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had gone down into, <clears throat> excuse me, the records room. Um, yeah, it, it, I mean, it's an area I don't think a lot of people really spend much it's time. It's not. It yeah. isn't. And so we went down there and because it was my first time there, I was actually there speaking at Enigma Cons, yep. but they canceled it due to uh -huh. that was when everything was going COVID. on. COVID. Yeah. And so, so they invited us speakers to go. So it was mm -hmm. really cool to be able to investigate with, with Steve and Alan and Alan Marston and the Connor sisters. And there was a lot of really cool people there that I knew, but I'd never met yet. And so, um, so I had never investigated St. Albans before. And so Alan took me on a tour and oh, that's good. we went down to, cause you know, he's very knowledgeable and just, oh, yeah. I, I really enjoy investigating with him because of his just real calm and quiet demeanor. And so, um, so we went down to the records room and we didn't want to interrupt. We, we could see a light in there and we could also hear two women that we thought were doing an EVP session. And so Alan, and of course I had my recorder going and Alan said to me, he's like, you know, we don't want to interrupt them. And he's like, but this is what this area is. And so we kind of stayed back a little bit. They got quiet and he was like, well, since we've already kind of intruded on them, let's just step in and I'll show you the room. We go around the corner of the room. There's nobody in there. And it sounded yep. like a full scale conversation. And so um, we ended up doing a session down there and then we did a session down there the next night. And we had um, a lot of different kinds of hits on the EDI box as far as pressure changes, temperature changes mm -hmm. on command. And then um, we kept seeing movement. We had a laser grid set up and we had a list of uh, some of the different patients and some of the different things that had happened. So we started reading all oh, that out. Wonderful. Um, when we went upstairs, we were on the second night, we were talking to Marcel and mm -hmm. uh, she was talking about an experience. She said, you know, a lot of people don't know about this, but at one time um, they had been upstairs. This was early on. They had been upstairs and they thought that two women had actually broken in and was down there in that area. So they had captured two women speaking down there as well, but it sounded like they were fighting. And it was even to the point they had called the cops and they stayed up at the top because they knew that was the only way out from, from downstairs. And um, nobody ever came up. And when the cop went down, there was nobody down there. So that's, um, that's so I was real intrigued by that area, I guess, just because, you know, one, a lot of people don't really hit that area, which and is a good thing. Yeah. 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 Um, but uh, yeah, definitely a cool location. I was invited back there um, last month, but due to everything here at the jail, getting all that yeah. set up, I didn't get to attend. So, yeah, I didn't get to either. I've, yeah. I've, I've just been so, and now that we've entered the high, holy Halloween season, um, yes. I give, I give ghost tours. So I'm, busy, busy. And Johan going, you're going to St. Albans in November, have a ball, have a ball, but watch yourself because it is very dark in there. It is uh, the stair when they, the place literally is a labyrinth. It's crazy. It is. It, it's easy stairs. to get lost. It's, it's crazy. Yeah. 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 Stay, stay with your guide, stay with whoever your chaperone is. 
guiding you through, stay with them because especially if there are docents on mm -hmm. duty because they are there, they know the building. So stick with them. Yeah. Yeah. Cause uh, I, I wandered off for about a couple hours and um, kept kind of going in circles and then kept Oops. getting in some <laughs> strange areas. I spent a lot, mm -hmm. uh, like I said, I spent most time there. Um, we had a real good session with Steve and, and uh, Alan Marsden and, and Alan May and all of them up in, um, uh, I'm blanking on the little boy's name. Jacob's room. Yes, Jacob. in Jacob's room. Yeah, we had yeah. a really good session I, there. I, I left something in there for in Jacob's room. There was, if you if you were there, um, there was a little uh, painting postcard of a mermaid that I left. Oh, okay. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah. Now we're geocaching. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, I did roll off of myself for a large portion of the evening. Uh. Yep. Thank you, Steve. <laughs> I, okay, so I kind of did go off by myself um, a little bit. Um, so that night, uh, Tennessee Wraith Chasers were there. So it was Chris and Mike. And they had, um, they gave me a fake $100 bill because they were trying to make bets on how bad I actually could bowl. Because I, when we were eliciting activity down in the bowling alley, I said, if you bowl, you have to bowl better than me because I only bowl gutter balls. And Mike began to call me gutter girl and still does. <laughs> <laughs> it was great. But he left the dollar bill. He left this fake $100 bill. And then he dared me to go. When we went back into the um, room where we were all gathering, he dared me to go back in there alone to get it. Mm. So I'm like, deal. <laughs> I get to keep it. And he's like, yep. So I, but honestly, I kind of cheated a little bit. I grabbed one of the docents to help me remember the way <laughs> down there. And there it was right there. There was nobody else around. So we went and grab. I grabbed that bill and then I made Mike and Chris sign it. So <laughs> <laughs> there you go. And I wanted to make sure to bring this comment up because I know Jeff has been in the uh, chat room and, and interacting yes. with everybody. Um, you know, he, he used to be uh, one of the caretakers there at the Bel Air house. Have either of you investigated that location? I haven't I investigated, haven't. but I've heard of it, definitely. Same here. Same yeah. here. What, a, what a story. I know. I've investigated that location three different times now. And uh, the first time was just myself and another lady. And that place is off the chain. I mean, it's it's crazy weird activity at that location. Um, and I highly recommend anyone definitely checking that one out. But I wanted to make sure to call that up because Jeff. Yeah, Jeff, Jeff, I'm definitely. always interested to meet up with people. And, and likewise, too, you know, if any of the people listening tonight ever make it over to Iowa, you know, hit me up. Let me know you're coming. You know, I'll, I'll definitely jump on and join you. And same and same with me in Virginia. And if anything, I'm pretty good at connecting people with different groups who Maybe a little bit, a little bit smarter than me, but <laughs> I'll well, and that's what's interesting. There's a here. lot of a uh, lot of teams out of Virginia. We have a lot here in Tennessee, but there are a lot out of Virginia. There are. Um, I I can't even list all of them because I don't even know all of them. But off the top of my head, of course, Transcend Paranormal, my group, Shadow Walkers, um, mm -hmm. Spirit Guides Paranormal. Um, mm -hmm. which, by the way, I did see Misty and Ashley Connor at uh, the nice. psychic fair, and they say hi. It's so cute. They're they're such sweeties. I love them. And um, uh, Yo Johan asked if uh, the Bel Air house is close to St. Albans. It's not. Um, the Bel Air house is. So it's right on. So if you're looking at a map, it's in Ohio, but it's like where you have the little tip that comes out of uh, West Virginia, it, it's actually near Mount, closer to Moundsville Penitentiary Ooh. than it is St. Albans. Yeah. It's actually right across the river from Moundsville. And oh. so, yeah. So if you, if you hit the Bel Air house, you can, you can hit Moundsville. You can also hit um, Steve Hummel's archive of the afterlife. Ooh. It's right up there as well. So um, all of that is, uh, it's, it's a great long weekend if, uh, if you hit it at that location. Um, 
I'm actually wanting to, I'm going to pull up your all site here. Got your. Uh, say the only place I've really been to in Ohio is Garrettsville, Ohio. There is a, um, a forest or a natural forest or whatever it is out there that there was some claims of stuff out in the woods. And we were out there for like three, four days. We camped out out there and wandered through the woods like crazy cavemen or something. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like fun. It was. It was um, a good time. Yeah. I think for me, um, I'm sort of not as traveling too much. I am more rooted in Virginia than anywhere else, mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean that the opportunity won't be open, especially, you know, Brandon and I might hit the con circuit at some point. Maybe. And that'll, yeah. And that'll lead to some great adventures. Um, I can tell you that I ran into some creepy places when I was living in Taiwan. Oh, I would imagine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, Taiwan, for those who don't, so basically Taiwan, for those of you who don't know, it's a small island that looks like a sweet potato just off the coast of China. And for people that always are curious, does Taiwan actually belong to China or is it independent? That depends on who you ask. I say it's independent, but, you know, for what it's worth. But it does have a very turbulent history, as several of the countries in the East Asia region do, especially with World War II, communism. Um, there's remnants of old prisons on some of the areas in Taiwan. There's, of course, then, of course, you've got the whole idea of Buddhism and Taoism located there. You also have a whole month that's called the Ghost Month. Yes. Wow. Yes. Mm. Yes. Wow. That's very cool. It is really cool. Anywhere that devotes a whole month to it has got to <laughs> yeah. have a great history. Yeah. It does. So oh, um, <laughs> I've been sitting there. I've been, she's been scrolling through this and I've been watching it going, that doesn't look right. I need to change that. I should, <laughs> I should adjust. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Got this. Oh, God. I, I can't take a good picture to save my life. <laughs> so the best, I guess the best um, way to find your episodes, um, is it to uh, listen? I mean, do they come out weekly? Um, they come out every other Monday. Okay. Um, so usually right around midnight-ish, uh, central-ish time, right around there, usually Sunday night into Monday. Uh, it's every other Monday. Uh, they, you can find us, you can get it on the website. You can go literally anywhere. I mean, yeah. we're on everything, Pandora, iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Okay. It's really anywhere you get your podcast. So you'll, you'll find us there. Yep. Gotcha. Gotcha. And I'm going to pull up your Facebook page as well. Uh, if, if people haven't checked out your, um, your your podcast and and uh, your different shows they definitely need to because it's um like i said it's very interesting and um cover a lot of great topics and have a lot of different great guests on there so yeah we've we've been having a pretty fun seat i'm, I'm having well, just so much fun talking to the people well, you've been on there too, Miranda. You know, don't don't shy yeah, away too much. That's I the have. that's the one on that I was what, talking about twice? there. No, just once. Oh yeah, I've, I've just once. Yeah, is what your first is your first season, right? Well, no, technically it has been twice because you helped me do that uh, Halloween episode that's last right. last year. Yeah. You were my you were that's my right. paranormal wife. That's right. That's or right. girlfriend. <laughs> girlfriend. That's what it was. <laughs> And that, um, was so a, that was a really. cool story. <laughs> that was. It was really cool. Yeah. But that's the, what you stopped at. That's that, um, that audible voice come over. Oh, very that cool. That video. We might be able to play that. Let me try that here. Ooh. I've got to pull it off here, but reshare it. Because I've got yeah. to do it with uh, audio. Let's You've see. gotten so fancy. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> We've got to do something here. Let's see. Uh, yeah, share audio. Let's see if that'll play. Um, okay. Can y'all hear it? Yeah. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. That's a beautiful house. Let's see if I can pull it up here. Watch the little captions at the bottom. Just gonna go hang out there all. Oh, master. Someone say my name. No. There was definitely a male voice. I heard that too. I thought Someone that was whispered? Brandon. I thought it was Brandon too. I didn't say yeah. anything. I didn't yeah. say anything. No one whispered. No. That was right behind you, Tim. Yeah. It was right next yep. to me. Oh. I, I thought it was. <laughs> I, oh. Let me out. Oh, well, that should get caught on this recorder for sure. I'm not going. That play it again? No, it just plays through it once. It'll repeat itself. But yeah, I mean, it's that was that loud, loud. And, and we could hear it audibly without oh, any master. equipment. <laughs> yep. Wow. Someone say my name. No. There was Did definitely you rewind a male that? voice. I heard that. Rewind that good. We'll hang out there all. Oh, master. <laughs> That's great. That? Yeah, no. they uh, everything in that house was picking on Tanner that night. He was getting all sorts of <laughs> all sorts of stuff going on with him, and uh, at one point, it actually the something was trying to connect with him, and it got to a point where he actually had to step onto the house for a few minutes just to kind of be able to breathe because it was just so much all at once. Wow. Didn't you say that Tanner was one of the more skeptical people in the group? Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. so it's like, it's probably no wonder that whatever was there was focused on him because it's like, I think tonight's the night. You need to, I, I need to reach out to you. Tonight's the night. It, it could be. It very well could have been. And then the neat thing about that house, um, when you look at that picture of it, the mm -hmm room off to the see as you're looking okay. at it um see i'll pull it back up yeah it's all yeah there you go so wow. if, you can, if you can pause it there so that mm -hmm. wooden door that you see kind of off to the left side mm -hmm. originally all the house was when it was first built was that room yep. and the room straight above it where that window is that's all the house was was those two oh. rooms they had a ladder like a rung ladder to climb up to get to the room upstairs. That is, and oh, that's so classic. That's I love it. all the house was. And when you go in there, you can still see where the ladder went up from the first to the second floor. Now, when the Grangers bought it, the wife wanted more rooms. So they added on all the other rooms as they went. And then one of the cool things about it is like a lot of the old, um, I guess you call them Victorian houses mm -hmm. on the far right. You can't really see it because of the pillars, but it has the floor to ceiling windows to it. Oh, like yes. they used to yeah. do so they could get the caskets in the room for the family viewings. Mm. Nice. Let's we'll see if I can. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. Off to the right. Those two there, but they, um, everything in the house is original, including like all the lights, fixtures and stuff. Um, at the time they wanted to be fancy. Now the guy that owned the house, he was cheap. They weren't rich. He was just cheap. He would haggle everything. And so they were one of the first houses in the area that had electricity, but it was so spotty that all the light fixtures are gas and electric combos. And um, unfortunately, they hang really low. And my my head learned that as we were in there. <laughs> <laughs> and um, we had a few close calls with my with my forehead. Um, but it was amazing. The room that we were in where we had the light up here, um, that room actually didn't have electricity. It it still doesn't. The lights in the room are actually from lamps around the room as opposed mm -hmm. to the fixture in the ceiling. Mm -hmm. So when the light came from the ceiling, it was definitely like, whoa, you know, what's going on? Brandon, which, which room was that? Um, so the room where those windows were, it's not that sitting room. It's mm -hmm. the next room oh, like the, the family okay. sitting room because that front room where those windows are that was actually the um the the room where the men went after dinner and smoked their cigars and had their brandy and um the actual family sitting room where the kids and stuff were allowed to be in right off the dining room off the what we call it now is the music room 
that's where it was right okay. like almost okay. dead center of the house oh wow so has this location um because I, I have never heard of this one um like you said when when people talk about iowa they they always talk about Villisca, Villisca and malvern has this one been open for investigations for a while or is it, it new? has been for a little while and the funny thing with this is is like i said i live literally five minutes from this place i drive by it every day on my way to work and I never knew it was haunted. I'd never heard anybody ever say anything about it. So I don't know if it was just kind of a nice cover up or what. And then um, my team said, you know, Hey, we're going to, we're, we're ready to, or we're going to be investigating this place. It's like, what, mm -hmm. why? And then <laughs> I started asking more people. And then all of a sudden I started hearing all these stories, like that second story window that's there by itself. Mm -hmm. uh, one lady was telling me that the kids wouldn't walk on this side of the street. They would cross to the other because there was a kid that used to peer out that window when the house was vacant. Oh, wow. Um, wow. They could see the curtains move and see the face of the child. And then there's reports that they've seen people standing out on that balcony too. So. Wow. wow. I'm, I'm trying to think if I've heard Jim talk about the Granger house. He didn't go with us. Oh, he didn't? No. Nope. Okay. Because I, <laughs> I was sitting there trying to figure out if I've heard anyone talk about that. And this is the first time. Right. It's, that. it's kind of a sweet little quiet spot. Um, nice. It's, it's got so much history in it and so much original property like the family bibles in there you can turn the page Aww. in the bible and see where they wrote the births and the deaths of everybody in the family in there because three of the kids died in this house i believe the husband did as well or i think the husband did i'm pretty sure the wife did because she was very sick and she couldn't get out of bed and actually the room that's the music room now was originally built for her as a bedroom because she couldn't get up and down the stairs to the oh, second wow. floor um, and then, of course, you know, the history of it where he had her sister move into the house to help take care of her. And they ended up doing things and having a child, which wow. him and his original wife adopted as their own. So, I mean, there's it's as Whitney loves it. It's a A&E or not a A&E, but a Hallmark movie marathon going on <laughs> with the family history. Yeah, you saw what I did there. I, I did. I don't, for the record, I don't watch that. <laughs> <laughs> I watch the it's, horror. I watch she horror. always has she always has a twisted love story that she puts in the histories of the episodes, and I was going to give her. Time. I actually do. <laughs> the last couple of episodes that I've done, I have found uh, very interesting love stories components to oh. it, or at least in terms of the legends. Um, in one of our recent episodes, it was in Florida. There was a, a theater and. There was a white man who was in love with an African-American woman, but the theater was segregated. And this poor man, according to the story, was trying to go up to the balcony where his love was. And he got very strongly discouraged later off site in a different location. He was supposedly killed by this woman's relatives. And wow. now it's that his his spirit haunts the theater. Hmm. Very yeah. interesting. I, I kind yeah. of like I kind of like going into the history of things that aren't really told much. So, yeah. for example, as Brandon kind of mentioned what I do with the research, I try to find out about indigenous tribes in the backgrounds. I try to find out African-American history. I try to just sort of see beyond or at least if I can't find anything, I just make mm -hmm. the resources available so if somebody wants to pursue it they can because mm -hmm. in a lot of ways one thing that i've learned not just working in a museum but also giving ghost tours and being an investigator more to a point the, a researcher mm -hmm. i have found that when people come to a ghost tour or a paranormal investigation it's like their gateway to the history Absolutely. Of that area. For many of them, that's their only mm -hmm. way to learn more about the history. So I just try to make it. Available. Yeah, it's another way to reach people for yeah, sure. Absolutely. You know, because it's just getting that 
I mean, because I can remember going traveling to the different historical locations as a kid. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things they would always kind of add in. You know, if we were going to like President Eisenhower's house or Andrew Jackson's house or some president's home or just some historic location, you would always inevitably have somebody ask if it was haunted, mm -hmm. if they had experienced anything or the docent would always tell about something they've experienced. And of course, I've always loved history, but that would always capture my my um, interest there of you know, when they would start talking about the, the hauntings. So yeah. um, let's talk briefly, um, we're almost out of time, but let's talk briefly about uh, your background as a, uh, a historical educator with the museum that you're at. So I work for this wonderful museum in Richmond, Virginia called the Valentine Museum. Uh, that's not about Valentine's Day, but believe me, we do have a special event on Valentine's Day. Um, Valentine Museum is the oldest private museum in the city of Richmond. And we have some amazing collections that talk about the diverse history of Richmond and the outlying communities. And especially since we happen to be in the area where a lot of the statues came down on Monument mm. Avenue. So we are part of that conversation and trying to find a way to use the community and welcome the community to how do you interpret history? What do you choose to remember and how do we move forward? So it's a big part of that work too, but I work with school groups and I work with adult groups. We do virtual tours, we do virtual programs, outreach, you name it. I mean, especially during COVID, we really got good with our virtual programs. And I we were able to reach more people throughout the state of Virginia, but I love my job. I have a blast with it. Um, but by night, I tell stories and I write, I write things. And sometimes people like what I write. <laughs> Does the museum uh, allow investigations or such inside of it? Not exactly. Um, I don't think there's anything discouraging it, but it's just something that hasn't exactly come up in conversation although some of the employees have said some things to me about it. It's just, there's a lot of logistical things with our museum sure. too, um, parking being the big one, but also we are right in the heart of the city of Richmond and we have a huge hospital complex surrounding us and it's wow. constantly being constructed. We are surrounded by that. So it, there's just stuff everywhere. But there are plenty of histor historical sites in Richmond that do have a reputation. And there's also plenty of good ghost tours in Richmond that we've also networked with with, um, the, at, with all the paranormal investigation groups. And mm -hmm. they give some pretty good solid tours. There's something for everybody there. Oh, very cool. Very yeah. cool. Um, so make sure I've not missed anything. Do either of you all have uh, any type of events or anything coming up? I know you have a novel out right now or a novella out right now. I do. Um, if uh, each of you want to talk about, like you, you mentioned that about the, uh, I don't know if anybody heard that. I heard it. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> Sounded like something fell back there. Oh, um, barking on my side. That's the dog upstairs. Yeah, yeah okay. there's no dog here, but it's weird. It started barking as soon as that crash. I definitely, yeah, I heard that crash. It sounded like it was coming just over your shoulder in the doorway. Yeah. So, and, yay. <laughs> uh, thank <laughs> you. Yeah, thank you. I'll have to go check on that here in a few minutes. No, uh, mine's my teenager came home from robotics league and the dog's going crazy. So <laughs> cool. talk about your book and then I'll talk about my thing, Whitney. Yeah, talk about any events or anything you guys want to plug. Okay, so huh, where to begin? Okay, so I help out with this haunted house attraction called Red Vane Haunted House. And we are entering the hot, like I said, the high holy season of Halloween. Our haunt opens on September 25th and runs throughout the Halloween season. We also do ghost tours, um, Ashland Haunted History Tours in Ashland, Virginia. Uh, we give tours Friday and Saturday nights. And who knows, you may see me. You may also see some 
interesting things. Um, yes, my book. Uh, it's called The Safe Room, and it is out right now. You can get it as paperback, and you can also get it as an ebook, not just on Amazon, but also on Kobo, Apple Books, those other things. And I do my also have some short stories that have come out. Um, I've got a short story appearing in a collection called Unfortunate Fables coming out October 12th. And it's about really, really dark fairy tales. They are not safe for work. So read accordingly, <laughs> but lots of wonderful things coming out. Very cool. Very cool. And we can share some of that in the, in the show notes because yeah. this will rebroadcast on YouTube and it will rebroadcast on Saturday night on my mix TV. So, um, so yeah, we'll definitely put all that Wonderful. in the show notes. Yeah. Let me know. Yep. And I'll send and then, you stuff. Please do. Please do. And then we have our team, the one that we were watching the video clip on transcendent paranormal society here in Iowa. We have a public investigation going on for that, um, national ghost hunters day um starting the friday the 24th into the 25th we're doing a public investigation where um as i'm sure a lot of teams do you know for public investigations we charge money to that way we can fund going places as well as equipment um but we're also donating a big section of it back to the historical society for where we're going to be at we're going to be in a little town of iowa called vinton which has uh some amazing haunted locations um they have um, a train station they have this house called the horridge house and they just recently lost the third place that they had mm. which was an amazing place we were having some great reaction or responses and one of the wildest experiences i've had for validation where five different pieces of equipment were going off simultaneously and the and this the words that we were hearing was continuing across all of them so like the wow. sentences were being continued off of each one and um anyways but so they, cause they couldn't afford to keep the place. So we're donating a big chunk of what we're doing to the historical society to help them Very nice. keep the places. But the people, there's still tickets available. Um, we're charging actually $50 a ticket for this one, just because we're donating so much to them to try and help them. But you get two places for the price of the one, because we're gonna be taking people, not only teaching them the history of the two places, um, with one of their resident historians that have been working with it for years upon years upon years. Um, but we're actually going to be doing the investigation simultaneously in both houses, both the house nice. and the train depot. So if you are in Iowa and you want to do something fun for that night, that would be a great one because there's some pretty wild places. That sounds like it. I like that about uh, all the validation you were getting with the equipment. That's that impressive. Yeah, it was footsteps walking down the hall. As wow. you hear it get closer, the REM pod goes off, and then it started talking across. Um, we had two spirit boxes. Um, we had the, we actually were using a Spiritus app, and then we also had the Ovulus 5, and it was talking across to all of them. Wow. That's wow. impressive and, and quite rare. Yeah. That doesn't happen yeah. a lot. Yeah. I, and also as another note, I love the fact that when we do public investigations with some of the groups in Virginia, pretty much all the proceeds go to the historic site that we're working with. So I, I love seeing how our work is able to make these places still available and still beautiful for anybody who wants to see them. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And a lot of people don't realize that, you know, they think paranormal investigation they don't realize how much preservation and restoration it, it actually helps it does it's huge especially over the i mean museums and historic sites are always in a bit of a crunch anyway economically mm -hmm. even the most successful ones but definitely over this year it over the past year so many places just need the help and love and also you never know for some of these places that have been closed down and reopened for the paranormal groups activity has spiked yeah. so think about that the spirits they miss us they want to hear us they want maybe they want to tell their stories. maybe I, well they want to talk to me 
They're fine with me. I don't know about you, Brandon. Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> the Granger House is another one, too. I mean, if you guys do get up to Iowa, make sure you go and visit them. It's a place is worth the trip anyways, but also they're trying to raise money because we had that storm last year, that derecho that Oh, yeah. maybe made national news we didn't know because we didn't have power for two and a half weeks Jeez. but um wow. it actually ripped the top of the house off mm -hmm. and collapsed the cupola on top of the carriage house down into the main floor or down into the into the 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 carriage house so if you can get out there it's worth the investigation but it's worth giving them the money to help them save it too yeah absolutely absolutely well well, again, thank you guys so much for coming on tonight. Oh, it was a pleasure. It was so much fun. Talking about what's uh, what's your next uh, podcast? Or can you say what the next one's about? Or what? Our, our what next one, on the next episode coming out or the next one we're recording? Uh, what you got coming out next or next couple, whatever you can talk about. So the next one we have coming out next is with Ghost Life Paranormal. It's mm -hmm. a, a kind of a culmination of three different teams down in the Florida, Florida, it was Florida, Georgia. Florida, Georgia. Georgia ish, the panhandle mm -hmm. on the coast ish. Yep. Chief, Chiefland, Florida, right? Yep. Chiefland, Florida. And these guys and gals are an absolute riot. There's, we had what, five of them on the episode yeah. with us? Yeah. Wow. And, one, and bless, bless their heart, one of them was just recovering from COVID and he oh. had pulled himself together to be on the show and they're they're delightful storytellers and oh, yeah, man. They, we spent half the episode <laughs> laughing too <laughs> yeah well and then the crazy thing with it too is we actually recorded it twice with them the first time the audio didn't record so i oh. went to check the stuff and everything was blank so we had to go back and oh, redo hard. it again and we still were just and, dying of laughter yeah. then for everything from ghost touching butts to uh, mm -hmm. making fun of uh, the army guys, making fun of Marines to, I mean, just anything and everything. And it's, it was just a riot. I mean, I think everybody will enjoy that. I, I think the best thing that comes across in that episode is how they called themselves a family, not just. Yeah. A team, and it really does show. Um, and then the episode after that is the one we recorded this week with, yeah, with Mustafa. Mustafa Gatilari of Ghost Hunters. And he too has a book coming out, Elements of a Haunting. He really, I mean, he's a fascinating guy to talk with, especially with his background. And it's just, he was just so much fun. And I get to see him on Saturday. Yeah, Yay! it was a pretty, pretty fun investigation. We get into some of the, uh, like the cultural uh, significance of the paranormal with like the Albanian culture from mm -hmm. the, that's where, you know, a lot of his family's from. So mm -hmm. it's, yeah. it's fun to kind of get that chance to look at something stuff happening in a different continent. Absolutely. Yeah. Cause you, once you start doing that, you realize the similarities, but also the differences of the hauntings. That's, that's very cool. So yep. we'll have to definitely... oh, a lot of talking about the gin. We'll tell you that much. Oh yeah, ah, I'm sure. Very I'm fascinating. Sure. Yeah, it's a wow. Neat, it's a neat topic, and just so much more to come. And we're always looking for people and teams to interview. Don't be shy. Cut, reach out to us on our Facebook page or email us, and we will. We would love to talk with you guys. Yeah, even if you just want to shoot the breeze talking paranormal, if you want to be on the show, if you're going to be in the area and you want to meet up and do an investigation together, hit us up. We're always willing to talk. We're always willing to have people on the show and hang out and have a good time. Absolutely. Absolutely. Awesome. Well, definitely folks need to check that out and uh, go in, and like the page and follow it. So. Um, but again, thank you guys so much for coming on tonight. I've thank really you. enjoyed it. And thank you to everyone in the chat room here. You all have had some, some great comments and questions over here. So really appreciate you guys. i um, going to follow up with just a few little things from my calendar here. Um, let's see. Uh, I have, let's see here. Make sure I'm saying the right dates. Um, I'm going to be in Las Cruces, New Mexico on the weekend of October uh, 2nd and 3rd. 
uh, speaking. I'll be out there with uh, Dr. Chris Sumner will be out there as well. I'm going to be doing a presentation on ghost biker explorations as well as a presentation with um, Brother Leon Wilkes. He uh, worked with me on a demonology case that uh, we highlighted in season one and season two. So really looking forward to getting out there. Um, I've never been to Las Cruces, so I'm really looking forward to getting out there and, and meeting a lot of uh, really cool folks out there. Um, next Saturday, September 25th, which I know we've mentioned several times on here with uh, the world's largest ghost hunt and National Ghost Hunting Day. Uh, I'm actually going to be hosting a haunted ride with Ghost Biker. This is going to be our, uh, it's technically the fourth annual, but uh, um, we did one earlier this year. So I guess it's really the third annual part two. Um, but, uh, that works. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, it's going to be on September 25th. We'll be announcing the ride, um, coming up probably this weekend, but, uh, it will have a, um, uh, it will come by here at the jail as well. And it will end at the RM Brooks general store bike event, their fall bike event, which is always a lot of fun. Um, and we ride through some of the most beautiful historic and haunted, uh, areas here up on the Cumberland Plateau in East Tennessee. So that's gonna be coming up on September 25th. And then um, I had uh, seen a comment here on, let me find it, uh, from Nancy Weems. Um, she saw the ad, I'm gonna be down at uh, Crystal Harley Davidson for Halloween in Florida. And so it was in the uh, Born Free, I think it's in the Born Free magazine as well as in the um, Born to Ride magazine. So. Um, so anyways, that's going to be coming up on Halloween. It's going to be, the event will be at the Harley Davidson on October 30th, that Saturday from 11 a.m. until 3 p.m. And then we're going to be hosting a haunted ride down in Florida on Halloween day. So really looking forward to doing that. There's going to be more information to come, uh, over the next little bit. And then of course the release of, uh, Ghost Biker, uh, season four. Like I said, that's been one of the things we've been really working towards. Um, I am I'm spread about this thin right now with <laughs> opening, with opening this location and then also trying to get the season. So hopefully that's still going to happen. We're still on target for that to happen, but um, all of my episodes are self produced, so you know how that is. Um, we're hoping if that ends up being the case, then that's going to be the first Tuesday in October at 9 p.m that will be releasing, but we do have some good episodes. If they end up not coming out in October, we, they will still come out. They may be just a little bit later, but again, we'll have some more information on that coming up soon. So now that I've thrown all of that at everyone, <laughs> uh, we have a great guest next Thursday night. I'm actually going to have um, Preston Bennett back on the show. He was on uh, last month and I know we had some technical difficulties. We were talking about UFOs and it seems like every time I have a UFOlogist or someone on the show talking about UFOs, <laughs> we drop signal. So I guess we'll see if that wow. happens again. It's it's a really interesting thing and the way it happened last time, it was, it was pretty crazy. So he's gonna be back talking about um, some different experiences and kind of picking up where he left off. So that's gonna be next Thursday night. And then we're also gonna be announcing some really cool things that we've got coming up for the month of October here at the jail. So, um, so we'll just stay tuned to the Historic Scott County Jail Facebook page as well as www.historicscottcojail.com and we'll have all that information on there as well. So again, thank you so much for coming on tonight and thank everyone in the chat room and we will uh, see you guys next week. Thanks guys. Good night. Have a good night. <laughs>